Yo, yo, yo. What it do, what it do? Gutter TV? I'm here, man. You already know what it do. Uh, story time with Gutter. We back. You know what I mean? I appreciate appreciate everybody that's been coming, everybody that's been calling me, texting me, emailing, DMing, everybody that's hitting me up saying, Gutter, keep telling stories. We need to hear this shit. We need to know. The streets need to know. All of that. Uh, so, we here. Let's go. Uh, today... I'm going to tell a quick story today because uh, I got to go. But at the same time, I'm going to just, I, I'm going to tell you a story I know you want to hear. This Today, I'm telling the story of, of the first day I met Lil Fat. The first day I met Lil Fat, the first week I met Lil Fat. That's what we're going to talk about. Lil Fat. All right, so how could I start? I don't want to go too deep in the story yet because it, it go to another story. But what I will say is, I'm going to cut it short and I'm going to come back to this story on another time. I owed him my partner some rent money because we were staying in the same house, at the same apartment. My partner, Dane Dash. I owed him some rent money and I ain't had the money. And, uh, shit, Dane Dash was like, uh, he was like, Bro, come up with the money. Go to your phone. Call some of these rappers or somebody that you know. And, and, and bro, we need to pay the rent before we get kicked out. So, shit, long story short, I'll get into that story another day. But today on How I Met Lil Fat, I end up going through my phone. I found Webby contact. I end up talking to Webby. Webby gave me big big mail number. That's Mel and Turk, the owners of Trill Entertainment. Webby, Webby is the one that gave me big mail number. I called Big Mail. He ain't know me or nothing. Um, but I just called him because I'm a young, hungry dude. I'm probably 21 at the time. I'm young and I'm hungry. I'm trying to get in the game. So I tell Big Mel, I say, hey, um, Webby gave me your number. I'm, I'm the hottest thing in Atlanta right now. You know, you got to big it up if you're going to call somebody, make it sound like something. So I wasn't going to make it sound like I just started or I was a beginner, which I was. But I wasn't going to make it sound like that. So I made it sound like I'm going up. I'm like, I'm going nuts. I'm the hardest in Atlanta. Ain't nobody out here messing with me. I'm the best cameraman, best this, best that. And I ain't even have a camera at the time. But I just was speaking my shit to Big Mel. Big Mel was like, he, don't, he a nigga that I learned later on that he don't do a lot of talking at all. But Big Mel looked at me. He was like, not looked at me because we was on the phone. He was like, uh, uh, meet me at Lennox Mall. And I was like, Lennox Mall, cool. But in my head, I'm like, I ain't got no money. I don't know how I'm finna get to Lennox. I ain't got no car or nothing. But you know how things work. I end up getting to Lennox and I met him. Probably like 5 o'clock in the daytime. He walking through the, uh, cal ca um, I was gonna say cafeteria. He walking through the, the food court in Lennox and I see him. I'm already there. I'm sitting down. He with, uh, I come to find he with Rambo. I knew Rambo from booking shows with Webby and Lil Rock. So he with Rambo, Trill Rambo. So Rambo, like, I know a little youngster. Little youngster, you met Arkansas. He the one to get, get me right on the smoke and all of this. I'm like, yeah, good. So now Big Mel, like, what you do? Do this, do that. Long story short, Big Mel is like, come with me. I'm going to tell y'all how good God is. Big Mel ain't know if I drove to the mall or not. He just told me to hop in his Escalade with him. That's God, y'all. He ain't even asked where my car was or nothing as we was walking to the parking lot. He ain't say, where your car? Where you park at? Or none of that. He knew, he must have knew I ain't have a car. That's God. So this big male, Trail Entertainment, um, hop in the car with him. He say, so what you want to do, nigga? I say, shit, I want to film for webbing them. Boosting them, little fat them. I want to film. I, I ain't really know what I wanted to do, but I was just saying some shit because I wanted to pay my rent. <laughs> so, um... Shit, real nigga. Big Mel took me to um he took me to uh um he took me straight to Best Buy. I went to Best Buy and I um we went straight in Best Buy, bro. Let me tell you how it happened. We walked in Best Buy. He was like, um he was like, What you um what you need up out of here? Like to make you go up or help you do what you need to do. I was like, shit, I guess I need this camera. He was like, nigga, don't tell me, tell them. So I'm like, all right, bitch. So I talking to the best buy people. I'm like, what's the best camera? What you need? I was like, I heard about a 5D or a 7D Canon. They was like, yeah, it's right here. Boom. So I look at it. Boom, that motherfucker was like 2500 or something. He like, get whatever you need. And I was like, all right, fuck it. So I got the camera. 
I got the, 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 the tripod. I got this. He say, uh, we about to go to the cash register. He say, you don't need a bag? I say, damn, he right. I need a bag to put it in. So I got the camera bag. I got everything. So I'm like, God damn, that's it's cold. It's a real nigga. So Big Mel bought everything. He bought uh he bought all the camera shit and everything for me. Um right after that, we drove. Um I hopped back in the car with him. I got my camera shit now, just met dude, all this. We drive out far. We end up at his crib at a mansion, big ass mansion, big ass crib. Walk in the crib. He just walk upstairs, big male dude. So I'm just chilling downstairs. I'm chilling. I walk up in the kitchen area. I'm just chilling. Next thing you know, come walking in the kitchen in his pajamas and everything, little fat. He walk in. I'm I'm looking. I'm sitting in the living room. I'm like, hold up. I know that nigga. I know who that. Who is that? That's fat. So fat walk in. He don't say shit to me. It's just me and him in the kitchen. This nigga don't say shit to me. This nigga go straight in the kitchen, make some orange juice or something, and then he he walk out. Like that nigga didn't even say why you in my living room, why you in the kitchen, who are you? Nothing. I said, damn, who that nigga? That crazy. So nigga, we um long story. I end up. Big Mel told me. He gave, came upstairs with a computer, came back downstairs with a laptop. He was like, work on this. He was like, uh, we're going to go on the road this weekend. I ain't even go back to my partner crib yet where I need to pay the rent at. I went on the road with them for like four, four, three, four days, maybe the whole weekend. Not only did I make my rent money and everything to get to that part, I made the rent money on the road with bro now. He probably paid me five, six hundred dollars so I paid my rent and had a little extra. But I got to kick it with fat. Fat really wasn't saying too much to me that whole weekend on the trip or none of that. He wasn't saying, he wasn't asking too much of nothing. He was just watching me a lot. And I'd be fucking with him, you know, like, bro, I like this. Or, you know, I'm fucking with him on the count my money backwards or anything. But he liked how a nigga move because I'm a gangster as well. But what had happened was at one of them shows that weekend, they couldn't get the, like, one of his homies that he was with, they couldn't get their gun in. So nobody could get in with their gun. So we all end up in the show, right? We in the show, we in the uh in the VIP. Fat, he in that bitch like, man, I don't like this shit, man. Ain't none of us got no gun. We just in this bitch. We just what he call it? He said we just in this bitch. I don't want to say lacking, but he was like, we in this bitch just basically lacking. Let's say that. I he turned around, looked at me. I said, hold on, bro, look. I went up under my shit. I had my Glock right here. He like, oh, bitch, you hard. I go in my pocket. I go to my shoe first because I heard Jay-Z say keep a 22 in the shoe in case I got a, in the club, I got a, you know, some, some, some. So I had a, a gold 22, a small one, this big. I put that, it was in my ankle as I walked in the club because I know niggas don't search your ankle. So I, 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 I'm in the club with two guns. I got the big Glock because I keep that bitch right here by my dick. I got that for my little uh, relative Trouble. Trouble used to say, make that motherfucker kiss your dick. <laughs> so I got that motherfucker right here. And, and I got the um the little gold uh, 22 in my in my pocket because I done moved it from my... Jay-Z said it again. Switch it from your, your, your ankle to your waist just in case. A clown-ass nigga want to get in your face. Something like that. So I, I, I put it on my in my pocket and I got the other Glock. I showed Fat the guns. He like, bitch, you got two guns? Oh, he was like, yeah. I remember this like yesterday. He looked at me and smiled. All I saw was diamonds. He was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, bitch, you hard. You going everywhere with me. And shit, uh, I swear to God. From that day, that weekend, I was everywhere with, bro. I ain't never leave that nigga side. He ain't leave mine, goddamn it. Like, unless we had to. But that that is how I met Lil Fat. That was the beginning. That's that's the story for sure. I will say, though, that nigga, he kept my Glock that night. <laughs> he like, I'm going to keep this bitch, but I had my little 22. That nigga, was, he was talking shit to his homeboys and shit. He like, y'all niggas, ho, oh, y'all niggas ain't even got the gun. Gutta got the gun. And this and this. <laughs> he, was, he was so hot. That I had my strap in the club that that nigga didn't want me to leave, nigga. Uh, shit, man. RP Lil Fat. I love Lil Fat. That's my little bro. You'll hear a lot of stories about me and Fat, but I, I tell you the story. So y'all ask me what y'all want to know, and I tell y'all. You feel me? But that's my little bro. Love him to death. We, 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 we got her. Know that. We got her, and we ain't, we ain't give no fuck, and we don't play. I'm still like that to this day. Bro, bro was like that. 
nigga, if y'all want to know about Lil Fat, which I know a lot of y'all favorite rappers, that nigga, he was that. He was a young nigga with money. He was a young nigga in charge. He was a young nigga with, the, with, 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 with could get any female. And he was a young nigga just could dress better than everybody. That bitch was wearing the drip. He had all the clothes, all that. Like, you couldn't fuck with younger. And he'll bust your motherfucking head. That bitch was a hitter. That bitch didn't play. Feel me? So, you know what I mean? I'll tell you this. In the next story I might tell be about Young Ready, Racked Up Ready. Fat told me if I fuck with anybody in Baton Rouge, fuck with Ready. He official. And when I met Reddy, Reddy definitely was official. A rest in peace, Reddy. That's my little bro. You know all the shit me and him been through. So I'm going to do a story about Reddy next. Probably about when he knocked the nigga out, him and Mad Marvin at the show. But back to little Fat, rest in peace, youngin. You know what I mean? Trail for life. Salute Big Mel. Y'all hear Big Mel, a real nigga. Turk, a real nigga. You know what I mean? I can't do nothing but salute them niggas, man. They put me in the dough. I was already moving and doing big shit. But when I met them... They turned me up a little bit more. And I turned them up. I turned Webby up. I turned Fat up. Kept Boosie going. It's facts. The proof in the pudding. Webby was on the down slope with Savage Life 2 and Savage Life 3. And, nigga, when I put, helped put out Savage Life 3, we was bringing them back. I remember we sold 30,000 copies the first week. It wasn't really good to the industry, but, nigga, independent, that was raw. So, let's get it, man. Go to TV. You're going to be big. Go to stories with gutter. You already know. Subscribe, all that shit. It's good. Wow. Bitch, I'm one of the greatest to do this shit. I created a lane. Has a kid, my mama told me, boy, you gonna be big now. The world know my name. Yo, what up? It's gutter TV. You gonna be big? Hey, look, this the new channel. Go to TV Clips, like, subscribe, comment, all that, and I keep dropping exclusives. We trying to get more plaques, you know what I mean? We need more plaques. This one need a plaque, man. Subscribe right now, man. Keep following. You know what's up, man. You're going to be big. It's good. Let's get it. Go to... You going to be big. Yo. Straight up. You going to be big. Go to TV. You going to be big. Straight up. That's how I... Stay safe. Keep it gutter. You, you know. Yeah, all that. Yeah! <laughs>